Now we begin section two, looking at the second industrial revolution. Our learning objectives are to compare the good and the bad elements of the second industrial revolution. We start by looking at a period of time known as the Gilded Age. The period after the Civil War, up until the end of the 19th century, was known as the Gilded Age, a term coined by Mark Twain and Charles Dudley Warner in their book, The Gilded Age, A Tale of Today. The term gilded refers to the process of gilding, where a thin layer of gold is put uh, on top of a cheaper material um, that are, of course, less valuable. And the term really refers to the idea that society maybe had this appearance of prosperity on the outside, but there was much less prosperity on the inside. Um, this period is associated with the Second Industrial Revolution. Great wealth was amassed during this period as big business emerged during this period with entrepreneurs or those who take risks to start a business uh, began to make large profits off their investments creating some of the wealthiest families in America. One example was Cornelius Vanderbilt who amassed great wealth through his railroads making the Vanderbilts one of the richest families in America. Another was John D. Rockefeller. Uh, as the owner of Standard Oil, Rockefeller amassed great wealth from oil. He used vertical integration, which meant buying up companies that were suppliers, and horizontal integration, buying up competitors, to form a near monopoly of the oil industry in America. By 1875, Standard Oil refined half of all oil in the United States. Andrew Carnegie made his fortune in the booming steel industry of the Gilded Age, and he became a self-made millionaire, and he sold Carnegie Steel in 1901 to uh, J.P. Morgan for $480 million. And keep in mind that was $480 million in 1901 terms. And now this brings us to the man that bought Carnegie Steel, John Pierpont Morgan, or J.P. Morgan. Uh, that name may sound familiar because it's still involved in banking and investments today. Um, J.P. Morgan, the man who bought Carnegie Steel from Andrew Carnegie, was a financier, who, or one who invests in or lends large sums of money to fund business ventures. By the time he purchased Carnegie Steel in 1901, he was one of the wealthiest men in the world. And this also brings us now to George Pullman. George Pullman made his fortune by creating sleeping cars for trains. He is also known for violently suppressing striking workers in the town that he created called Pullman, which has now become a neighborhood in Chicago. A new form of business became popular, the corporation. Corporations are treated as being separate from their owners, and they allow for many people to be partial owners of a company by purchasing shares in a company. Many companies began to merge together to form trusts, effectively giving them monopolies, or businesses with complete control over a market. In 1859, Charles Darwin's book on the origin of species by means of natural selection was published. Darwin suggested the idea of natural selection as a means of explaining evolution, uh, which basically stated that individuals in a population that had some type of genetic adaptation that was an advantage would be more likely to survive and pass that trait on to their offspring. Thus, new species could evolve over time. Now, uh, that really becomes the basis of the concept of survival of the fittest put forth by British philosopher Herbert Spencer, who largely is credited with uh, combining Darwin's ideas of natural selection to sociology and ethics. This becomes known as social Darwinism, which justified the discrepancies between the rich and the poor during the Gilded Age.
by 1890, 75% of the nation's wealth, be wealth belonged to only 10% of the population. Congress responded by passing the Sherman Antitrust Act, making many types of businesses that are designed to reduce competition illegal. Many workers work 12 to 16 hours a day working for low wages. Many of these people were children. Some workers began to organize and form unions. One of the first successful unions was the Knights of Labor. The first major rail strike, the Great Railroad Strike of 1877, uh, it turned violent and resulted in many deaths and it was put down by state militias and federal troops. In 1886, there were more than 1,500 separate protests over working conditions and wages. A large group gathered in Chicago's Haymarket Square to protest police action. Someone threw a bomb and people panicked. By the time the Haymarket riot was over, 11 people were killed and more than 100 were injured. Foreign unionists were blamed for the violence. Big business responded to the labor disputes by forcing workers to sign agreements not to join unions and blacklisted troublemakers. Still, union membership increased. Samuel Gompers founded the American Federation of Labor, or AFL, which is still a major union today. In 1892, workers in Carnegie Steel went on strike in the Homestead Strike. The strike became violent, resulting in several deaths, and the steel workers were blamed, and union labor lost support. Streetcars became common in large cities. Some were horse-drawn, and later electric, electric streetcars became a common form of mass transit. In large cities such as Boston and New York, subway trains transported people in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Automobiles began to appear in the late 1800s. On December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers conducted the first sustained airplane flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Soon, air travel would be possible. In 1837, Samuel F. B. Morse developed a method of sending messages instantly over electric wires using a code of long and short signals which would become known as Morse code. The telegraph wires were strung alongside railroads and railroad stations had telegraph offices. Alexander Graham Bell was the first to patent the telephone in 1876. By 1900, there were more than a million telephones in use. Christopher Latham Scholes developed the first practical typewriter in 1867, and it improved with the keyboard layout that is still in use on computers today. Thomas Alva Edison became a famous inventor during this time period as well. Much of his work was conducted in Menlo Park, New Jersey. Among his inventions were the first phonograph or record player, a telephone transmitter, and the first safe light bulb. 